Blessed in what you do. How many of you want to be blessed? Blessed in what you do, right? Like there, there is some, so many times the blessing is a part of what we put our, our action to, right? And so um, as we're halfway through the year, I thought it was important that we would be reminded of a few things uh, that the Lord had said. So I put together four, uh, four things today um, that I believe are, in a sense, the underlying and the heartbeat of what the Lord was trying to get in, in the, into this house. And we started this year um, that this house would be in order. House in order. We talked about house in order and, uh, for, at the beginning of the year, just that this house, our house, our personal house, uh, and then we went into a family series, a few little things in between there, but um, that we'd have a house in order. And so we, we said this at the very beginning, the number one requirement for my house to be in order is that I got to get in agreement or I got to be in agreement with God. If you and I, if things are going to be in order, number one, it, it starts with being in agreement. And this isn't number one, but that's where it's, everything starts. I have to be in agreement with what God says. I can't, I'm not to be questioning what God says. I'm not to ignore what God says. I just have to be in agreement. And part of becoming in agreement and be, or the beginning of coming into agreement is that my will would be surrendered to his will. There's a scripture that talks about my, I, I will, or, we, or it says this, that he gives me both the grace, it's in Philippians, he gives me both the grace to will and to do according to his good pleasure. So you could say it this way, I, Lord, I will to do your will. It's not hard for me to do the will of God. Matter of fact, in, in, in Psalms it says that God's boundaries for me fall in pleasant places. Where God calls me, to be, where God sets me in the body, it's the best place. It's actually the blessed place. All right, that leads me to a story. Squirrel. Um, so I was in Colorado like a number of years ago, and my sister uh, took me to the store. At, I was elk hunting, and I had a huge backpack and had a bow case, and she took me to the store to get me this, bo- this popcorn, and this bag of popcorn was like this big. And she sent me on the plane home with it. And she's like, it's the best popcorn in the world. I'm like, what? Yeah. She's like, it's the best popcorn in the whole world. It it even says it on the bag. So I'm like, (laughs) she's like, that's why it comes in such big bags. Cause you, you're going to, you're going to want to eat it. And they, they pop it. it. This is in Colorado Springs at this health food store. They pop it at the store. They use coconut oil and some kind of mineral salt. And it's so amazing that people just keep coming back for it. Come back. You can't leave Colorado Springs and go back home to Arkansas without this popcorn. I'm like, you're crazy. So we go in there and there's like the medium bag. And then there's this big bag. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not even kidding. It looks like, you know, you know, trade up 12 to win this big prize kind of size bag. And so I'm carrying this bag of popcorn through the airport. I got my, my back pack on, my bows checked. So I got all my gear. So, but I got this bag of popcorn that's as big as my gear. And this conversation starts about my popcorn in the TSA check line. It's like long in Denver. And everyone's talking about my popcorn. And I'm like, well, my sister, and it is because it is the best popcorn in the world. And this lady goes, What? It's not the best popcorn in the world. I'm like, my sister says it is. She's like, no, 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 no. It says it's the blessed popcorn in the world. And on the bag, it said the blessed popcorn in the world. Anyway, I was like, what the heck? You want to be blessed in what you do? Get an agreement. Get an agreement with the Lord and his will for your life. That he, his boundaries fall for you. I, the blessed place to be. The best place to be. See why I had that? The best blessed place to be is in the will of God. That's the best place. It's in agreement with what he says. Come into agreement with whatever his word says. And you'll find uh, things come into line, come into order, and things unlock in your life. Uh, that, that, that you and I need. So number one, here we go. So it's important for us to, to remember, but it's, it's more important just than just to remember. It's important for us to continue. So it's good for you to remember something, but how much more important is it that you and I would continue in that direction that the Lord gave you? If you don't continue in it, you're not going to get 
what the Lord desired, desired or designed you to have or to walk in. So, um, so again, but the key to continuing is remembering. So, so you, it's important to remember, but it's also important to continue. But in order to continue, I'm going to have to remember. This is why taking notes are so important. Because you can pick up this note. You know what I did for my notes? For, I, I, I pulled, I, just for my lightning quick memory, I, I went back to notes. Things that I had written. Things that the Lord had spoken to me that didn't make it out here, but maybe it was just a, I don't even know if I said it, but I wrote something that was important to me. That the Lord had spoken to my heart. And so uh, James chapter 1. So number 1. This is the point number 1. Remembering, remember his word. Remember God's word. And so this is one of the things the Lord spoke to us this year. Is we need to remember his word. And I ask this question. Does the Lord have space in your life? Does he have space to speak? What's the space? What, where, where's his place? James chapter 1, 22 through 25, it says, Do not merely listen to the word, and so deceive yourselves. Do what it says. Anyone who listens to the word but does not do what it says is like someone who looks at his face in a mirror, and after looking at himself, goes away, and he immediately forgets what he looks like. But whoever looks intently into the perfect law that gives freedom. Isn't that interesting? The best place, the blessed place, the free place. The, what we just celebrated, what you were sitting on your porch maybe, and ju- or, or, or driving your car, thanking the Lord for, maybe you forgot all about to thank the Lord, but this is an amazing place that we get to call home, yeah. a free place. Yeah. And continues it, here's what it says, but he who looks intently into the perfect law that gives freedom and continues in it, not forgetting what they have heard. That's the key to continue, not forgetting. Have you ever been in the middle of something and then someone comes and interrupts you? And what happens is you forgot where you were at. So you can't really pick up where you left off because you got interrupted and something drew your attention away. And so now you are delayed uh, in continuing if you ever pick back up where you left off. Maybe you're in the middle of a thought process and you're solving something and your kids are like, hey, dad, hey, dad, hey, dad. And it's not that you're not listening. It's that you are actually somewhere else doing something, even though it looks like you're not. And they, they won't stop. And you're like, just hold on. I'm... But whoever looks into the perfect law of, uh, uh, that gives freedom and continues in it, not forgetting what they've heard, but doing it, they will be blessed in what they do. So aren't you thankful that the Holy God gave us a helper? You know one of the number one jobs that the Holy Spirit does? Reminds us. That's his help. Hey, don't forget about what I spoke to your heart when you were sitting with me. You know, when you were driving down the road and that song came on. You know, that you decided to intentionally put on. You know, that playlist that you set space for. Or you know how you have that podcast instead of just, you know, listening to something that just is about sports or whatever. That's great. But you have this one time opportunity when you go from here to here and you know that I want to make sure that I'm giving ear. So I'm intentional to set my dial the same way I would set an alarm clock to get up for work. I can set my, my, my drive time to fill up. I can set my presets to not just hear about, that's what I love about Sunday. See, I'm listening to, I mean, I'm filling up on church, right? A little blue jeans and some baked beans, or I don't know, or whatever, chicken. Anyway, whatever. What I'm saying is, instead of having those presets in our car, we can set some presets. Same way you set your alarm, because you got to get up on time. Talking about being intentional, talking about not forgetting well, not forgetting, you're going to have to have some reminders. You're going to have to put some things before you. You're going to have to, when you walk into your house, uh, uh, if you have Alexa, I don't know how that even works. If we, I don't think we have that because um, I've never heard us say that. So um, all I'm saying is you can have on your TV, you can have worship playing. When you come into your home, when you walk into your home, worship's playing. Why not? What you're doing, you're setting the atmosphere. 
So, giving God space, John 14, 26, but the advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, I'll, he's going to teach you all things, but he will also remind you of everything I said to you. So, it's important if we're going to continue, we're going to have to, we're going to, have to remember God's word. We're going to have to remember what he said. Uh, you know, <clears throat> God's words can become like that bag of chips that got left out on the counter overnight and didn't get put up. What happens when, when the chips... They get stale. Was there anything wrong with those chips? No, that was called user malfunction. You left the bag open. They make, they make this thing called chip clips. You know, you got to be intentional about putting it on so that they stay fresh because it's still there. Sometimes we can let God's words get stale just because we didn't do anything with them. We opened it up and it was like, and it was fire, right? Like, but you can't eat just... I used to think, I could eat just one. I'd give me some Doritos, and maybe we would be talking, can't eat just one. But Lay's potato chips, just plain? I was like, nah, I don't know. Maybe y'all are like, you know, I can't only just eat one. But I be- bet you could just eat one stale one. And then you're like, eh. Can I tell you, when the Word of God comes to you in the Holy Spirit, while you're sitting in a service or where you intentionally hear, and when He speaks something to you, it's... Fresh and crisp and awesome. But did you know that same word, if not acted upon, it can lose its flavor, it can lose its zeal, it can lose its attaboy, it can lose its, I'm ready to jump. And now, ah, I don't know. Because we waited, we left it on the counter, and we didn't move with it. There's things that the Lord has spoken. And he's spoken to you, maybe with your marriage, maybe with your kids, maybe with your finances, maybe in your body. But because it's not acted on, that word and that power in that word, it remains. But it's become stale to you. God's word has no expiration date. It's not like chips. It doesn't expire. If you'll remember it, if you'll allow and say, Holy Spirit, this you'll find that one of the things we do here often is we ask the Lord to remind us of the things that he said. Show us the, 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 those words that you spoke to us in, in our youth. It's interesting um, how Paul didn't say to Timothy, I want you to put you in remembrance of, uh, of that thing that was said last week, you know, because you needed a new word. We're always looking for a new word. Can I tell you the word that you got when you were a young man or a young woman? That was a seed that God, there might be branches off that seed, but that seed is the one that the Holy Spirit will always bring your attention back to. God doesn't have a plan B or C or D or E. He has a plan A. So what he does is he plants his plan in your heart first. He doesn't say, well, I'm going to get him with this one, and then uh, once I get him to eat the carrot, then I'll lead him somewhere else. No, when he draws you, he draws you with truth. So when he speaks to you, he speaks to you the truth. And that truth is his word that doesn't expire, and he doesn't change his mind on. So it's important for you and me to say, Lord, refresh me. Fresh Refresh me again on those words. Uh, Refresh me. Uh, Put me in remembrance again of the things that you've spoken to me. And one of the ways that we do that is we give God space. So if I'm going to be reminded, I'm going to have to give God space because things become stale when other things get in. That's all. That's what happens. It was a great word. It was an awesome word. We just forgot the chips on the counter. It wasn't nobody wanted to leave them out intentionally. It was just we got busy with something else. Well, in Mark chapter 4, I want to read this because we, sometimes we, 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 we speak about it, but we don't read it, and there's life in this. Mark 4, verse 13, the Jews said to them, if you don't understand this, then how are you going to understand anything that I say? Next verse. The farmer sows the word. This is a parable of the sower, and he sows the word. Some people are like seeds along the path where the word is sown. As soon as it hear, they hear it, Satan comes and takes away that word that's sown. So the word's sown, and immediately Satan takes it. In other words, like, meh. Like, I don't, I'm, I'm not even receiving it. Or even maybe your ears are somewhere else. Maybe your mind is somewhere else. Maybe, you know, we're not locked in and saying, wait, God has something special for me today. So he's, he's stealing the word even though it's being sown. 
Okay, then there's another type of soil which has no depth. It says the other seed is like sown on rocky places. They hear the word and they receive it with joy. But, but then it says, since there's no root, they last only a short time because trouble or persecution. The moment you see something or feel something that opposes that word, you let go of it. I guess God's not. And as long as I use, as long as I navigate life with these eyes, doubt will be and unbelief will be the rule in my life. So you will be limited by only what you can do, not God's part. Okay? But others, and this is where a lot of times we fall, others, uh, they, 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 they like seed sown among thorns who hear the word, um, but the worries of this life, the deceitfulness of wealth, the desires for other things, other things come in and choke the word and make it unfruitful. Can I say it this way? Um, it, it says that fallen among thorns. When that seed was sown, there was not thorns sprouted. The thorns came in. When that seed was sown, when you took time to pen that, to make that note, to draw that on your hand, you have nothing to write with, this is important. It's important. It's, a, it's in the right place. It's important to me. But, but what happens is other things sprout up, and my attention is drawn away from that word, and that's why it gets choked out. The only difference between soil three and the next soil that we see, again, the soil is your heart. The next soil, let's put it up there. It says this, others like seed sown in the soil, hear the word, accept it, and produce a crop. Produce. Produce a crop is because that soil was tended. That, let me say it this way, that seed was guarded. That seed was valuable. That seed was treasured. That's the only difference between those seeds. Every heart, every good heart, every type four soil, it didn't have some blue light that killed every seed and microorganism, you know, it, it, so that you, when you plant, there's no weed seeds, only the seed. No, 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 it took tending. It took tending, it took guarding. It took, no, no, I see that, but this is what you said. Get that out of here. And, and, and when you have faith and patience, guess what you inherit? So, again, remembering what God says uh, is important, but having what God says is great, but when I have it with the side of all the other things, when I got all these other things that are just as important or now become more important, the chips get left on the counter. And it becomes stale. So what's the key to remembering i got to give God space? We talked about this at the beginning of the year. How many of you know things that you fear? And we're talking about the fear of God, not the fear of man. How many of you know sometimes we talk about fear, like fear of God, like, no, Jesus is my homeboy, you know, and all that. Um, but when I was in Colorado this, this last week, I bought some coffee at this farmer's market. And I was talking to, this, uh, to the guy that was roasting the coffee, and he asking me what I do, and, and we were just having a good chat. And um, he went to this church called Impact, and I was like, oh, that's cool. And he said, actually, I grew up Catholic. And I said, hey, that's cool. My, my dad grew up Catholic, and my grandma, and so my grandma, her Bible is a treasure. It's, it's so worn. It's so precious. It's, and uh, if, if my, my cousin, Heidi, you're listening, I want that Bible. <laughs> um, <laughs> But she has grandma, my grandma's Bible. And, uh, and so my dad grew up Catholic, and um, my papa, uh, uh, Papa Wally's still Catholic. And while talking with him, he said, you know, the only thing I miss about being Catholic, I miss going to the place in the house of God where there's reverence. It's the only thing I miss. Like where we could just... Be quiet for a moment and just wait instead of have to have another special or smoke and mirrors. I mean, all of that with intention, I understand, and I understand people have ADD and all that kind of stuff, but what if we just got stuck with the awe of God for a moment? We say it this way, and we were talking about this. What about just... 
I said, what you're talking about is the fear of God. And I really believe the fear of God needs to be back in our homes. See, what you fear, you give space to. Is that cliff? I mean, I can just jump right down there. But if that cliff is 150 feet, how many of you know? That's not how I'm standing. How many of you know I'm kind of like, oh, you ah. You know? I would just buy some 150-foot drops. What you fear... You give space to. If you see a lion, a mountain lion, and you're on the trail, how many of you know? You're going to give some space. Hey, bear. Hey, bear. You're going to give some space to what you fear. And, and so where's the space for the Lord in our lives? Well, that's a good question. Where is that space? Where is that place that we give him? Because, again, why are we talking about remembering and why are we talking about space? Because God gives you a word so that you can do something with it. Okay? But the beginning of wisdom is the fear of the Lord. So if I'm going to, and the Bible says, by wisdom a house is built. If I'm going to do something, if I'm going to have something to show it for in this life that's of value, not just wood, sticks, hay, and stubble that burns up, I'm going to have to operate and navigate my life according to wisdom that has its roots in the fear of the Lord. In other words, when God says something, I, it's important to pen it. It's not just important to remember. It's important to do it. And, and I'm reminded uh, what he said when I give God space. So I'm sitting here in the morning time, and I'm listening, and I'm giving God space to, to continue to, the Holy Spirit to remind me, to, 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 to direct my steps, to, to go over some notes that he was already speaking. Lord, how do I do that? What do you want me to do here? Because you spoke this. Pastor was saying this, but you said this exactly to me. And you say you don't hear from the Lord. You wrote down exactly what he said. So I'm giving him space so that I can do it. Because, because my days and my hands are to function and to build and to a house that remains. That when I stand before the Lord or at the judgment seat of Christ, the, the reward seat for what you've done or what you haven't done, that what is, what is left there is not ashes. So I have to have space for God to speak, to remind me. But when I'm so busy, I, I get busy about another thing, another thing, another thing, another thing. When you get your morning late started, started late, excuse me. And uh, when you get your morning started late and you wanted to spend time here... But now all these other things are calling, aren't they? And even though you might take a moment, you're distracted. You lost, it, it just lost its place. So again, number one, we got to remember, we got to give God space. Why? Uh, where do I give space? It's what I fear. I, get, I give space, the fear of the Lord. And we, we, we just talked about the scripture. It says that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Proverbs chapter 9, verse 10. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. It says this, this, that wisdom, through wisdom, verse 11, your days will be many and years will be added to your life. Wow. Through the words of the Lord? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Can I tell you, some of, when you're sitting in that space that you gave place because you have reverence for the Lord, he's going to remind you of some things that will take care right away from you. And that care will solve and calm that ulcer that you didn't know was starting. That was going to cause some leakage into something else. God was going to take it away right there, adding years to your life. Adding years to your mind because it was so heavy with care, heavy with care. You can keep your mind all the way to the end. All the way to the end, you can finish sharp, eyes bright, knees strong. You can be like, Caleb, hey, I want that hill country. Wait, wait, hold on. 40 years, 40 years, 40, okay. 
You're eight. You want the hills? I thought you wanted what do they call those? A rambler? One level? You know, don't have to step over anything? No, he said, give me the hills. Amen. All right, let's keep going. So, number two. So we got to remember his word. It's great to remember it, but you got to also receive his word. So, receiving God's word starts with, and you got to ask yourself this question, how do I reason? If I don't, how do I reason? When God says something, I can remember it, I can hear it, I can even write it down, but, but when I see that, when I hear that, when I remember that, how do I reason about that word? Does my reasoning start with God Almighty, who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that you ask, think, or hope to imagine? What that says right there, if I, my reasoning starts with God Almighty, my mind is limited. He can do here. So for me to try to figure out that word instead of receive that word, when I try to figure out the word, what I do is I put a lid on my heart from receiving that word. Because your mind is limited and God is not. So what if, he can't, what if he doesn't do it your way? What if he doesn't do it in your time? We're limited. So i got to remember it, but i got to receive it. Look at this here. Uh, Philippians chapter 4, verse 13. We, 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 we use the scripture and we put it on shirts and shoes. and, and it, Help me out. Philippians 4, 13. I can. Okay. Paul said that. Why did he say that? And where did, why, when did he say that? What was he talking about? He said, I got the secret, guys. When I got a lot or I got a little, here's the secret. It doesn't matter if I got a lot, because a lot doesn't mean I can, and a little doesn't mean I can't. What means I can is Christ's strength in me. So it might look hopeless here, but it doesn't matter if it looks like I got a little. It doesn't matter if it looks like a lot, because my hope is not in my bank account. My hope is not in, well, they said I got a doctor's report like this. My hope is not in those things. It's not that I have a little or I have a lot. My hope is in the fact that I have strength in Christ. So how do you reason? If you're going to receive a word of God, it starts with how do you reason? Do you consider God is able? In your family, well, you know, you get a doctor's report about, I, I, I hear so many reports about what kids are nowadays. And then we start saying, well, my kid is this, baloney. You know what your kid is? Your kid is what you tell your kid is. Oh, come on. No, I know. What was that? Receive his word. Oh, how do you reason? Well, I reason based on what somebody said because they saw him shaking his leg, which you still do. You know what I'm saying? And so now we have an identity about that's a limiting factor. Some limiting factor. Maybe uh, that was a secret sauce that was going to aid them in stepping forth into all that God called them to be, and they need a little more juice than you because God has big plans for them. So maybe you don't put a cap on them instead of release them into all that. Because I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. All right. Praise the Lord. (laughs) So there's nothing that I can see with my physical eyes right now that can cause me to believe. There's nothing that you can see with your physical eyes that can cause you to believe. See, because belief is of the heart. You can't believe the word because you see something. What you're believing is what you see, and that changes. You know what doesn't change? God's word. It doesn't change. I was talking with Ben. We were on the way to get fireworks, and he said, I was reading in Jeremiah, and uh, he's going to Israel here at the end of the month, or not Israel, uh, Christians United for Israel in D.C., and so he's been, uh, just has a desire to go to Israel, and, all, and he's been there. I think he's been there one time, but um, he just loves Israel, and so he's been learning a lot about it for years, and he said, I opened up to Jeremiah, and it says, I'm going to bring you back not just to this land. He said, there's going to come a day I'm going to pull you from all the four corners of the earth. And now he's like, 
We've seen this. We've seen this. God's saying this here. We've just seen this. God's keeping his word. Said that God's keeping his word. Whether we keep it or not, whether we remember it, or whether we receive it, or we just say, ah, that's not for me. We'll put that one on the shelf. God's keeping his word. I think we should keep it. Keeping it starts with how we reason. How we reason. Or, and I say the, this way too. Does my heart hold an opposing word? You can't hold both. See, when I come under God, I stand over Satan. But when I stand, when I don't come under God, Satan stands over me. Like there's, there, there's, it just happens. It's, there's no like lateral move. Like oh, I'm, a, I'm, I'm old man. Can I tell you what the definition of Satanism is? You're your own man. <laughs> Go look it up. You're your own man. No, Satan's ruling over you. You're your own man. So number, so number one, we're going we're gonna to be reminded, or we need to remember his word. We do that by giving God space. Give God space. Number two, we need to, we, we, we remember, number one, we remember his word. Number two, we receive his word. We receive his word when we, when we reason the right way. By reasoning that God is able. Number three, we need to put God's word into action. So we remember it. That's important. Remember. Okay, he said this, but it's not just what you remember. It's not just what you know. It's what you believe. It's what you receive. And now we need to do something with his word. We need to do it. So put God's word into action. You know how, you know how we put God's word into action? You know what causes people to freeze? What is it, the number one thing that causes people to freeze? Fear. Fear. Fear of what? What would they think? Fear. What, are they, what if? What if? Fear. So let's, do, let's be a doer of the word. Let's put God's word to action. Let's look at this here. Proverbs 28, verses 1. It says, The wicked flee when no one pursues, but the righteous, what do they do? They're bold. How bold? Did you know that the church of God should be courageous? Did you know that, that he, I, I said, said this at the beginning of the year, just explaining my heart of even why, I, like, like, why am I doing this? Well, because you asked me to, Lord, but what is it, the desire of my heart is that we would have, a, we'd be a courageous, a courageous people. That the church of God would be courageous. That faith, let me say it this way, it takes courage to walk by faith. You know why? Because... What are they going to say? Well, what, what, what about this? And what about that? You, courage has the ability to stand through adversity. That's what courage is. Let's keep going here. So it says, The wicked flee when no one pursue, but the righteous, they're bold as a lion. You know what makes someone righteous? Well, the blood of Jesus, which simply is a declaration that God, God's finished work, God said they're righteous by the blood of Jesus, but righteous and its definition is this, God's way. When you do things God's way, when you and I put to work, when you and I do something, guess what? You have the right to be bold. When you step out on what God said and that's your soul line, you have the right and you have the, also the strength and the grace to step. It's there. It's in you because you're not looking to the wind or the waves. You're not looking to. You're looking only to the word. Now, I'm not saying go try to walk on the water. I am saying if he tells you to get out of the boat, you better get out of the boat. But if you don't have a word to get on the water, then you don't get on the water. This is how you walk by faith. You can't just magically, woo, you, you got to get a word from the Lord because he spoke a word and now you gave him space to continue to speak on that word and you reasoned this, that God is able and now you're going to put some action to that word. That's, a, that's what happened in just a moment when, when Peter got out on the water. In just a moment Lord, tell me. If it's you, tell me. Well, if it's you, you're able. Well, he's walking on the water. One, two, three. 
And then he got his eyes off of that. Let's keep going here. So um, let's, let's, let's look here. James chapter 2, 14 through 24. I know this is a little bit of a mouthful here, but I want you to see this about how faith, when it doesn't work, it dies. Kind of like those stale chips. When you get a word from the Lord and you do nothing with it, it just gets thrown away. Faith without works, faith without corresponding action, dies. What, is it, what good is it, my brothers and sisters, if someone claims to have faith but they have no deeds? Can such faith save them? This is, the, this is a good question. If you say you're a Christian but you have nothing that matches it, why are you saying you're a Christian? I mean, this is why it's like, once saved, always saved? Uh, you want to argue that one? We can argue it both ways. Sealed by the Holy Spirit, absolutely, but your heart will want to please the Lord. There will be some corresponding action, a desire to just, there'll, there'll be something, there'll be some work, there'll be a spark. Can such say say them? Suppose a brother or sister is without clothes and daily food. If, if one of you says to them, go in peace, keep warm and be well fed but does nothing about their physical needs, what good is it? Man, I'm so thirsty, huh? Well, man. Well, I hope you, you know. Man, it's, get refreshed. Have a great day. What good is it? In the same way, faith by itself, is not a com- if it's not accompanied by action, it's dead. But someone will say, you have faith, I have deeds. Show me your faith without deeds, and I will show you my faith by my deeds. He's saying, if you don't have deeds, he said, you believe there is one God? Good. Even the demons believe that there's a God in Shudder. It doesn't mean you're saved. It doesn't mean your allegiance is pledged to him. There's a lot of people that they want a ticket to heaven. They just don't want to surrender their heart. That's a real thing. I want a ticket there, but I don't want, it's like this little uh, nursery rhyme that we used to read, who wants to help me plant the wheat? Not I, said the, not I, not I. Who wants to help me weed the wheat? Not I, not I, not I. Who wants to help me crack the wheat? Who wants to help me make the bread? Not I, not I, not I. Who wants to help me eat the bread? I do, I do, I do, I do. And Mother Hen said, because you didn't, because you wouldn't. Because you wouldn't. How many times this is Jesus standing on a hill, crying over Jerusalem in his heart? How many times I would have gathered you like a hen gathers her chicks, but you would not? Will, will, will. Will is so involved. What do you will? God's grace is at work within you if you'll yield to it, to will and to do. But you know what you're going to have to do? You're going to have to conquer some fears. Did you know there's some people that that, that they don't go to heaven because there's friends standing there and their heart's crying out to this invitation that somebody's given and there's a group of three friends and they're like, oh man, my heart's, but these other friends are like, oh, you're such a... Blah, 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 blah. And they're over here in this group of friends, and this guy's sharing Christ, or maybe you're in a service, and you got these kids that are sitting here, and they came with a friend because their friends invited them because they're gonna go have a party afterwards or whatever. And the pa- pastor Austin's up there teaching, and the word is just going, no, 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 no. And their friends are all like, <laughs> and they're all like, I want to respond. Hey, if you, that's you, you come down front, and they're not moving, you're not moving. And you would not, because of fear. If you're going to walk and step out, if you're going to do something with the word, you're going to have to conquer that fear. You're going to have to do something with what you've been given. This is walking by faith. Like, what did the Lord ask you to do? What is this call on your life? Well, just to retire at this time and, you know, work this many years at the same thing where there's no risk. 
isn't it weird how we want to solidify our lives in such a way where there's no risk? I was talking while we were in Colorado, I was talking with Jeremy uh, uh, Pearsons, and we were just talking about just vision. And we took a drive, and just him and me were, uh, were there, and he said, he said something, and it just went off on the inside of me, and I just kept on rolling with this. But um, vision always creates need. Always. You got need, vision, vision from the Lord always creates need. And yet, we want to live and we wish we could make our life needless. When you don't have need, God has nothing to meet. When you have no need, God has nothing to meet in your life. Do you want, but my God shall supply all of your needs according to his riches, not. The need is, need is valuable, but need can move us either to faith or self-sufficiency. And actually, when I went out to Colorado about 12 years ago now, I went out there, and this is where the name Beyond Church came from. And when I was on the plane, the Lord's like, I want you to have your ears perked. Not these ears, but these ears. And the first time I went out there, I went on an elk hunt, and... Um, and I, I sat at this pond all day, and I kept on hearing in my heart so clear, what did I say? And I, all day I sat at this pond, all day, for an elk, but also because I, I couldn't leave that spot. And I couldn't figure out what he was saying until I got on the plane. And I heard it again, and I thought, I, now you, it was almost like just so clear, what did I say? I'm like, I don't want to talk. I have the blessed pop, popcorn with me. I'm good. <laughs> and, he, and that's when I heard that's just it. You forgot what I said. And it just started flooding. You, this message is, is to, be, we're, to be beyond the four walls. The time you had a name change. It brought you out and I got caught under the stars because my dad got lost in the woods on the side of a mountain. And I had to sit on this, in this avalanche blowdown. I'm up at the tree line. And the stars are unbelievable until one in the morning. And I'm just looking at the stars and all I can think about was Abraham. I didn't know I'm going to have this conversation on the plane. And I shared this with, um, I shared this last night on the way to get fireworks uh, with Ben. So I had forgotten what he said, but then this time when I went back out, I forgot how it works. I forgot how the promises of God work. When you get vision, it comes with need. But that need is not to be met by just your hands. It's to be met by faith. In Corinthians 4, it says this, this, that we believe in keeping with the same spirit of faith. We believe and therefore we speak. If I'm going to put to action the word of God in my life, it's not going to be because I'm going to muster up and do something my words are going to have to come into agreement. I'm going to have to declare what God said as it was so. Call those things that are not as though they were, it says. Faith calls those things that are not as though they were. There are things that God has called you to. There are things that God has spoken to your heart. There's things that he's told you, you've been reminded of, you're treasuring. But you've got to do something with them you got to put that word in your mouth and declare and stop wait and see and said declare and see. So, uh, thank you, Lord. So faith without works is that we're going to jump down to Joshua chapter 1. I'm not going to finish that uh, that piece there. But Joshua chapter 1, 1 through 11, uh, we we, we, we use this Joshua 1, 8 often. Be strong and very courageous. But let's just just put ourselves in the story for a moment. Moses, my servant, is dead. Verse 1. Moses, my servant, which they were, his body was not found because they would have worshipped this body. In other words, he was so, such a man that the people looked to. Now Moses is gone and dead. And now Joshua, you're standing in his, in his seed. And, and the Lord said to Joshua, this is so good. That's so, that's so important. Number one, the Lord said something to him. What did the Lord say to you? Did you write it down? The Holy Spirit's going to remind you of what the Lord said. That he said to you even when you were a young man at the beginning. He doesn't have a plan B, C, D. He has one plan. 
What did he say? Get that back out. He said, my servant is dead. Now then, you, you and all the people. Can I tell you, faith can't be private. (laughs) Faith can't be private. But he said, you would not declare me before men, neither will I declare you before my father. Faith can't be private. Hey, with every head bowed, every eye closed, nobody looking around, I understand the principle and the premise of that, you know, to where someone could move where they were intimidated by the people that feared them. But what about the scripture that talks about, you couldn't confess me before men, how can I confess you before my father? Faith is not private. God spoke to you, and what God spoke to you is supposed to affect them. Bottom line. What God spoke to you, Dad, is supposed to affect your family. What God spoke to you is supposed to affect your marriage. What God spoke to you is supposed to affect your workplace. Your jo- it's, it's not private. Faith is not private. It is personal, but it's not private. Moses, my servant, that you and all these people get ready to cross the Jordan River in the land I'm about to give to them, to the Israelites. And again, we're talking about um, the, the, number three, putting into action and not being afraid. He said, so you're going to go over to the Jordan. I will give you every place where you set your foot, as I promised Moses. Your territory will extend. So he's reiterating his word. It didn't change. It didn't change. He said, I will give you the place you set your foot. As I promised Moses, your territory will extend from the desert of Lebanon and from the great river of the Euphrates, all the Hittite country, and to the Mediterranean Sea in the west. No one will be able to stand against you. No one. It's interesting. He's talking about what his, it's the people that he's afraid of. The Lord's addressing his fears. No one will be able to stand against you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, I will be with you. I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. So be strong and courageous because you will lead these people to inherit the land I swore to their ancestors to give them. Now be strong and very courageous. Courage steps out. Take strength, right? Step in. Be careful to obey all the law my servant Moses gave you and do not turn to the right or to the left that you may be successful wherever you go. Compromise never leads to success. We'll just leave that there. Don't turn to the right or to the left. If the Lord says, hit the rock, hit the rock. If he says, speak to the rock, don't hit the rock. Well, I'm trying to get the same water. What, don't turn to the right or turn to the left. Compromise never brings about God's provision. Oh, he got water, but he didn't get to... The promise, the provision. Don't turn to the right or left that you may be, uh, that you may that you may be successful wherever you go. Now keep this book of the law always on your lips. Make sure it has space. Meditate on it day and night, so you may be careful to do everything written. And then you will be prosperous and have good success. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Don't be afraid. Don't be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. Verse ten. This is what we don't often. Grab next to. He said, and this is him stepping out in faith. So Joshua said to the officers, you know who the officers are? All the people that are over all the people. All the people that have people report to. All the people that are going to be going to tell the other people. What Joshua just said. He said, he ordered all the officers of the people. Here's what he said. He said, go through the camp and tell the people, get your stuff ready. Because I know it's been 40 years. This is a statement. Do we know how strong of a statement this is? 40 years they haven't been able to get across. 40 years they haven't been able to step over. 40 years, what makes you think? Because let me tell you, your tomorrow is not based upon your yesterday. If it is, you will be there 40 years from now. Your tomorrow needs to be based on what the Lord has said. That's it. Go through the camp and tell the people, get your provisions ready for three days from now. You will cross the Jordan here to go in and take possession of the land your God is giving you for your own. Next verse, last verse. Go, uh, that was it. That was it. So he said, I order the people, go through the camp, tell the people, get your stuff ready. Three days from now, you're crossing in. Thank you, Lord. So fear men can rob you from doing what you believe and kill your faith. We saw that. Faith without works is dead. 
What is it that causes the fear? Or what is, the, what is it that causes it to keep us from moving? Fear? Fear of man? Don't let your faith die because you're scared of somebody when it was the Lord that said it. So remember his word, receive his word, put action to his word. And the last is this, declare, I will walk in his way. So there's a lot of things you got to, but now you got to put, your, put in your mouth, I'm going to walk in his way and receive grace. See, God gives grace through reminding us of his way. Look at this verse, this, this passage of scriptures found in Isaiah, verse 30, 18 through 22. Sometimes I'm just amazed by, well, not just sometimes, I'm always amazed by the Lord. How he'll just put something together and just, like, wow, where did you get that? I don't know. You. He says, uh, yet the Lord belongs, the Lord longs to be gracious to you. Do you believe that? God longs to be gracious to you. Wow. This is, that's just a hang up statement right there. Can you receive that? Well, how are you going to receive it? How I reason. How you reason depends on whether or not you can receive it. The Lord longs to be great. Yeah, well, I saw this or I didn't see that. So I can't receive that. We'll put this back here because faith is present right here. And right now, when, as, you re- receive, as this word is read, faith is present for you to grab a hold of and to receive. That the Lord longs, and you could receive this. The Lord longs. He, he who would not spare his own son, how will he not also freely give you all things? You can't look at what you see with these eyes. Anytime I'm led by these eyes, it always will lead me to unbelief. Yet the Lord longs to be gracious to you, it says. Therefore, he will rise up to show you compassion. I love that. He longs to be gracious to you, so he, he, he's going to be compassionate and show his kindness and his mercy to us all the time. The Bible tells us in, in, in Romans, it is his goodness or his mercy, his kindness that leads men to repentance. If it, we love him because he first loved us. So he is moving with compassion because he wants to. He's not waiting for you to move. He'll continue to love you. The question is, will you have a window and will your will be surrendered to respond when you had an opportunity to at that moment? You never know. God's never going to stop knocking. But the question is, in that moment, you had the awareness to answer. Will you have that awareness again? I don't know. God won't stop. But sometimes we won't stop. We won't stop to answer. But so he, God's moving. He said, I long to be gracious to you. Therefore, he will rise up and he's going to show you compassion. For the Lord God... He's a God of justice, and blessed are all those who wait for him. Next verse. People of Zion, you who live in Jerusalem, people of God, you will weep no more. How gracious he will be when you cry for help. As soon as he hears, he will answer you. Although the Lord gives you the bread of adversity. Hmm. They're not walking with the Lord here. The Lord's wanting to be kind because he's, he's going to move with compassion and be kind. And adversity is causing them to cry for help. And the water of affliction, he says your teachers, adversity and affliction, will be hidden no more. With your own eyes, you will see them. Next verse. Whether you... He says, you're going, to see that, you're going to see these things. They're not going to be hidden. You're going to see what, what was causing these things. You're going to see, and here's what's going to happen. Whether you turn to the right or to the left, here's what I'm going to do for you. I'm going to talk to you. I'm going to talk to you. Declare, I, and he said, here's what I'm going to do. Here's how I'm going to show you my grace. Here's how I'm going to show you my mercy. He says, you will hear. Whether you turn to the right or the left, your ears will hear a voice behind you saying, this is the way, walk in it. No matter what's going on. He said, I'm going to be gracious to you. You're going to see this. You're going to see that. You're going to be very aware that, that it's not me causing this. And my word is going to be telling you, this is, I'm, I want to be gracious to you. You're going to, you're undeniable. Undeniable, you're going to hear his word. But this is something we need to say. This is what the Lord says, whether you, where, no matter where you're at. The Lord is saying, no matter what you're doing, no matter if you're not tending word or you're tending sin, wherever you're at, 
The Lord says, I'm going to be gracious to you because I want to be, and I'm going to declare to you, whether you're looking over here or looking over here, this is the way. Walk in it. The Holy Spirit's going to do his job. Next verse. Then you will, and he says, because of this, you're going to hear this, and you're going to, and I'm going to remind you, and I'm going to draw you, and I'm going to continue to say, this is the way, bud. This is the way. Adversity's here. Affliction's here. But this is the way. I'm going to lead you out. And he said, then you will des- desecrate your idols overlaid with silver. In other words, you're going to want nothing to do with these idols. You're going to recognize that they can't provide anything, but only he can provide everything. And he said, you'll throw them away like a menstrual cloth and say to them, away with you. Wow. Just, I don't want nothing with any of that stuff. I just want you. I just want, I just want your way. This is the way. Walk in it. And here's what you and I need to say. I, I, want, I want your way. Father, I want your way. Thank you for your way. This, I, I'm walking in your way. You declare, as, you, as for me and my house, we will serve. We're walking the way of the Lord. We're walking. I'm walking. And so you begin to, so, you, so you, you remember his word. You receive his word. You step out on his word. But you keep tending and you could keep the walk of faith and you keep walking by faith when you and I keep that word or his word in our mouth. When you and I come into agreement and say, I'm walking in his way. I'm walking, I'm walking, I'm all the way to the finish. There's some things that have been started in, in your life, but you haven't seen them. And there's the statement that was, came out on a Wednesday night is that we don't need a move of God. We don't need a word of God. But we need to move with the word of God. We don't need a move of God. We don't need a word from God. We need to move with the word of God. That's how a move of God starts. A man moved with the word of God. So many times we're looking for God to do something from the outside when God is in partnership or made himself... um, at the mercy or at the of your will. He's not making you. So this is a good reminder. Midway through the year, house in order, things working, coming under what, what he says. Lord, remind me if there's anything that I, I've forgotten. I, I'm asking you to, 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 to remind me. I, I'm going to give you that space. Uh, how, how I reason, Lord, I've been reasoning by my eyes instead of with my heart. And I thank you that the eyes of my heart know things that my head doesn't. Lord, I receive you by, at your word, at your word. I'm gonna, I, I make this choice. I receive your word. There's nothing I can see that can cause me to believe. Belief is right here. So I receive your word because I reason with my heart. I trust in the Lord with all of my heart and I lean not to my own understanding. And then I've put my action to because I'm not afraid because I'm renewed with the word of the Lord as I was and I'm, I make a declaration. And this, is what we're, get ready, this is what we're doing. I say and I continue to say what God says and I move with it and I walk by faith. I not leap, we walk by faith. And then I let my daily, my daily word, this is the, the last thing. Lord, again, I've told you, I told you, and I told you again. I'm gonna walk in his ways. This is the way, walk in it. So I'd say it this way. I'm a child of God. I know his voice. And the strangers I don't follow. It's important that you would say, I know where God is leading me. And I am following. Today, halfway through the year, you might have felt like it's been like this. Maybe you felt like real fast. Maybe it's felt, it's important that you and I say this. I know my father's voice. I know where he's leading me and I am following declare that as a family as for me and my house it's whatever you, in the way you would say it but it matters that you declare the same way that James says you steer your life with a tongue or a horse with a bit it matters that you declare over your family over your life where you'll be tomorrow you know where I'm going to be tomorrow I'm going to be in the way of the Lord where are you going to be? I'm going to be in the way of the Lord. Where's your family going to be? Going to hell in a handbasket? Nope. In the way of the Lord. Guess where my finances are going to be? 
in the way of the Lord. Guess where my love walk with my enemies is going to be? In the way of the Lord. Guess where everything in my life is coming into agreement with? The way of the Lord. Guess where my body is coming into agreement with? The way of the Lord. The Lord. And so he, how does he bring grace to you? He reminds you, whether you're in the left or the right, no matter where you're at, whether you're saying, no, 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 this is the way, walk in it. Yep. You know what, Lord, I, I repent for that. And I make that course adjustment, and I say what you say. That's what repentance is. It's a turning around. In the middle of your left and your right, the voice, the Holy Spirit calls, and you hear it clear, and he says, make the correction. Make the correction. Make the correction. We're halfway through a year. That's awesome. But these keys right here will keep you on course your entire life. Amen. Amen. Let's stand this morning. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Let's just close our eyes and lift our hands for just a moment. Let's wait on the Lord a little bit. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. have a sense in my heart that there's hearts are open this morning to to receive uh, words but also just lordship that you were on places in your life you were unwilling to surrender before and you're saying I want to walk in God's way concerning this and concerning this so we're going to not just allow that heart to be open and that opportunity or that window uh, to pass without stepping through it with the words of our mouth. So you know what it is in your heart, um, what the Lord has been dealing with you, or even a place that was unsurrendered right now you can say with your mouth Lord I choose your way concerning go ahead and talk to him right now you will, you'll find you're going to walk through you're going to walk right through you're going to you have this opportunity to step through because, because your heart is open and ready to receive Father we thank you this morning that what you said in your word we come into agreement with it we come under the authority of your word. We surrender our hearts and our lives. And we choose to walk in your way. In the name of Jesus. If you're here this morning and you've never made Jesus the Lord of your life. If you've never surrendered your heart to him, I want to give an opportunity, invitation right now to give your life to Jesus. The Bible says if you believe in your heart and you speak with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, you'd be saved. He makes it that simple. Because he's, And he's always calling. So if, you're, if he's knocking on the door of your heart and he's saying, you need to get right with me, you need to get right with me. I, I don't know all of the, oh, well, I've done that before and I did this before and I did that before. I don't care about all that. Here's what I'm asking you. Here's what's the most important thing. If he's knocking on the door of your heart, and you know that you need to pray a prayer or you need to, then you need to respond. Instead of reason that, oh, this and reason that, I respond to him from here. So if that's you this morning, rather than thinking it through up here, just listen to here and, and, and say, God, I need to get right with you. I know it. And just lift both of your hands and I'll lead you in a simple prayer. Right now, with your hands, both hands lifted, if that's you. If you're at home, lift your hands, and I'll lead you in a prayer. Thank you, Lord. Any hands, thank you for your hands, for your boldness. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for responding to the knock of your heart. 
Thank you. God, you're so good. Thank you for knocking. Thank you for knocking. Let me lead you in this prayer. Just say, Father, today, I surrender my heart, my will, with my mouth, I declare you're my Lord. I desire to please you. Thank you for paying the price for me by sending your son Jesus to die on the cross, to be risen again for me. I love you, Lord. Thank you that I hear your voice. And I choose to walk in your way. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Do you just minister and uh, uh, just direct in uh, uh, people on the path, uh, order steps ahead, just, uh, just, uh, just a roller coaster downhill, just, uh, uh, just ease, grace in the name of Jesus uh, with, the, with the response. When we respond, we thank you that all grace abounds. In the name of Jesus, we thank you for it. Just breakthrough, just breakthrough. Hand on, hand on, hands up. Just same way, receive your hands on us. Lord, we received this morning the anointing to finish, the anointing to finish. We received this today, the anointing to finish this year strong, to finish with you, to finish with you according to your word. In the name of Jesus. Amen, amen. If you need healing in your bodies, I know we did that this morning. If you need agreement and prayer, I guess that was more like uh, maybe you say, I wanted hands laid on me. Come on up. Um, I know that happened already. but Or if you need agreement or something, we'll be up here afterwards. Other than that, we'll see you guys Wednesday night. Love you. Have a great week.